Good afternoon. Welcome to the Church of St. Paul the Apostle, where we will begin Mass in just a few moments, both online and in the church.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. We gather today around the table of the Lord, looking for a little bit of a, maybe a respite. That could be from the heat, it could be from our own flaws and sins, it could be from the world that's around us, but we do come to this sacred space and allow this time to be us and God, and God inspiring us to bring that out into the world, the hot and messy world. So let's begin by acknowledging our own fault and trusting in God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Prince of Peace and Mighty God. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Let my eyes stream with tears day and night without rest over the great destruction which overwhelms the virgin daughter of my people, over her incurable wound. If I walk out into the field, look, those slain by the sword if I enter the city, look, those consumed by hunger, even the prophet and the priest, forage in a land they know not. Have you cast Judah off completely? Is Zion loathsome to you? Why have you struck us a blow that cannot be healed? We wait for peace to no avail, for a time of healing, but terror comes instead. We recognize, O oh Lord, our wickedness, the guilt of our ancestors, that we have sinned against you. For your name's sake, spurn us not. Disgrace not the throne of your glory. Remember your covenant with us and do not break it. Among the nations, idols, is there any that gives rain? Or can the mere heavens send showers? Is it not you alone? our Lord, our God, to whom we look. You alone have done all things. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. For the, For glory, the glory of, of your, your name, name, O Lord, Lord deliver, deliver us. us. Remember not against us the iniquities of the past. May your compassion quickly come to us, for we are brought very low. For the glory, for the glory of, your of your name, name O Lord, Lord deliver, deliver us. Help us, O God, our Savior, because of the glory of your name. Deliver us and pardon our sins for your name's sake. For the, For the glory, glory of, of your, your name, name, O Lord, deliver us. 
Let the prisoners sighing come before you. With your great power, free those doomed to death. Then we, your people, and the sheep of your pasture will give thanks to you forever. Through all generations we will declare your praise. For the glory, glory of your of name, O oh Lord, Lord, deliver, deliver us. us. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. You alone are Lord, you give us mercy. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. My friends in Christ, the Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus dismissed the crowds and went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, this, He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father, Whoever has ears ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever heard someone use the phrase, with all due respect, and then, with words that follow that don't seem to show respect, like kind of, a, kind of an oxymoron, like it's, it's hard to say, it's hard to be at least have integrity if you say, with all due respect, you're an idiot. I mean, sometimes that happens, or at least what follows kind of implies that. So we do use that sometimes as a trite throwaway. But it actually, is a message that I think is conveyed by the prophet Jeremiah today. Because this section of Jeremiah is what we typically call a lament, and that it may be obvious. And it's something that many of us may like to do and probably have done at some point over the last four months or so. A lament is essentially, oh man, this is terrible. But beyond that, in the scriptures, a lament is specifically addressed to God. And Jeremiah does that here. What have you done to us? Now I've noticed in my time as a Catholic, but particularly in my time as a priest, that for some reason we don't think that that's okay. Maybe it was the Catholic school nuns who kind of drilled into us that we should never question God or the church or the authorities. But for some reason we're reticent to do exactly what Many of the prophets and throughout the Psalms, we see people of faith, people who love God, actually doing. And that is saying to God, what's up? Why have you thrown me in the pit? 
Why have you done this to us? A lot of times, there's no real good answer to that. But what Jeremiah shows us and what we see in the Psalms is that God, in fact, invites us to do that. Jeremiah was commissioned by God. The scriptures are God's revelation to us. So this is okay. But what's weird about this passage is that Jeremiah goes through all these things like, oh, it's so terrible, everything's going wrong for us. What, what, what have we done? What do you do to us? And then at the end, it seems like he completely switches it up. He says, but in all the universe, who could cause rain other than you? In fact, he even says, do we think that it's just a scientific or a meteorological fact that it rains? Well, quite frankly, there's plenty of people today that would say that, yes. There's not some god up there pressing levers and making it rain. It's high pressure and low pressure. And, but Jeremiah says, lest we think that it's just the clouds that make rain. No, it is only you, O Lord. So doesn't it seem a little odd that there he is complaining, he's lamenting, but then in the end he says, you know, you're the one, you're the god. How could we believe in anything but you? Well, I think what he's modeling is, with all due respect, even though he does it in the reverse order, right? He's like, how could I respect and revere anything but you, O Lord? But even though that is the case, even though you are God, you're in charge, still, I kind of wonder, what's going on? And that, if you will, in a nutshell, kind of represents maybe not all of, but a good part of our prayer. That God wants us to say, why is my cousin, my mother, not healed from that disease? Why do we still have this pandemic? Why do we still have to be socially distant? Why can't we come to church and not wear a mask? It's okay to say these things to God. As long as we remember what Jeremiah remembered that God is in charge. It's really exemplified perfectly in, in the book of Job, where Job does the same thing. He's like, why are you punishing me so much? But I know I wasn't there when you created the universe. So it's that balance of reverence and respect for God, but also apparently God inviting us to share our heart with us. If there's something we don't understand, if there's something we're burdened by, it's okay. God's shoulders are big enough to bear it, to shake our fist and say, why have you done this? As long as we're not expecting, you know, in 10 minutes, some big scroll to come out of the heavens and say, well, now here was my rationale. Are you okay with this, Dave? That's not how it goes. <laughs> with all due respect, and with God, that's a pretty high bar. With all due respect, I'm kind of going through it here, and it feels like you're not listening to me. It feels like there's no end to this. It's okay to say that and to have respect for God at the same time. So it might be today our invitation is, what is your lament? What is our lament as a parish community, as a people of faith here in America on planet Earth in 2020? What is our lament? And let's give voice to that at this Mass with all due respect to God. Let's stand and pray. I don't see our mass intentions, so with all due respect to whomever mass intention it is today, we offer up your intentions. But let us pray for the church. Let us pray for the church throughout the world, particularly 
those who are suffering so greatly during this time of economic upheaval, of so political and social tension, and of public health crisis. We pray for all those working in the church to bring about healing and unity. We pray to the Lord. For our world, our nation, particularly those states and cities that are suffering most severely right now due to the coronavirus, that God bring us healing and hope, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died, particularly those for whom we offer this Mass, those who are in our hearts, in our family or friends, and for all who mourn the loss of loved ones, we pray to the Lord. And for your own intentions. For these and for all who have no one to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, you give us the gift of faith. It is in that faith we make our prayers this day in the name of Christ the Lord. Amen. We continue to be grateful for all those of you who, on the way out, make use of the, the basket and continue to support us, as well as those of you online who, even though you can't be here in person, find the value in us bringing the sacraments to you and, of course, supporting the parish in many other ways. So thank you very much for your generosity. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings with, which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, with all the bishops, clergy, religious, and all who serve in your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. We go forth proclaiming the gospel with our lives. Thanks be to God.